And I, I, you, for those of you that don't know, oh shoot, I, I'm gonna push, press continue because it put the recording thing on. There's a, there's one of our new members with us. That's Bob Bolthaus, and I, he he lives part of the time I think in. I can't Mexico. hear right now. Oh, am I muted? Oh, I hear you just fine. Okay, fine. All right. If somebody may not have their own sound up if you can't hear me, so. And anyway, I just wanted to say, if you saw on the screen, a gentleman named Bob, he's, he lives part of the time in Mexico and part of the time in the USA, and he's new. So we don't have that many gentlemen. So I always have to point them out. You know, they're special to us. because, And he's been studying lace for a while and getting better. So and kudos to everyone that come, comes and joins me. I think Belinda has a little introduction to do, and maybe we're going to wait another minute or so before we start. I don't know what time. It's only one minute after, so we'll make it, wait a couple more minutes because some people have a hard time getting on. I, I, so so just, just a bit of information for all of you. If I seem a little nervous, it's more because my hubby's been sick for the last three days. He had traveled to Tennessee. Seven of my younger grandchildren moved there just recently, several trips back and forth, my husband did the last trip with my son-in-law on a bonsai run with three little girls, not the littlest girls, and uh, then flew back home. So he was wore out. The kids in Tennessee had colds. My daughter had a cold. So he was fighting a lot of stuff and I think his body is still fighting. So, but he's doing a little better today. I just wanted you to know that, of course, all these things happen and for those of you that don't know me real well, my grandchildren, all 14 of them were right in this area, well, as they added to the numbers, for 21 years, and now seven of them are in Tennessee. So I'm not grandchild poor, but I sure will miss, you know, the, the little ones and that family. So especially for the youngest two, because I they live about 20 minutes from here, and I used to pick up two or three of the other younger ones and drive, take them and drive to to their house. And, and of course, the four and a half year old of my sons would be so excited. Cousins are coming, cousins are coming. And now the Nana comes with no cousins. The Nana doesn't have cousins to bring. So that's kind of a bummer for them. But it'll make the reunions better. And it'll mean that I have some place to go in Tennessee after the convention in 2024. So Okay, so apparently Barb is saying she can relate to her kids being far away. So, so anyway, I think we are. I'm ready to turn it over to you, Belinda, for the introduction. Okay. Um, welcome back, everybody, to our our trunk show. I think I'm looking down the list of people that have entered and that are coming in, and I think you've all heard my spiel before. But um, let me do it quickly. It, remember, we are being recorded, so if you do not want to be part of the recording, make sure you turn off your camera so that we can hear you, but we can't see you. If, um, if you're having trouble hearing, I heard somebody say I had trouble hearing, make sure the volume on your computer is turned up. Sometimes we turn ours down and we forget. We also, if you, I'm going to control the screen today because Maria wants me to uh, help her run the, the slideshow. So I've got the spotlight on me. So you should be seeing full screen. If you have difficulty seeing what she puts up on the screen, it's my fault. Speak in, let us know so I can try to make some adjustments on my end. Um, I think that's about it. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right, so Maria, we will turn it back to you and I can go over to the slides now if you'd like, or do you want to see them face to face again? Uh, either way, whatever is easiest for you, if you get the slides prepared, that might be easier. So the yeah. very first slide that Belinda has put up are the little hats. So the little hats were made by the mom that has the seven kids that moved to Tennessee. So. Those are a little gift to you with any order this week. 
if I run out, which my daughter has some and I have some, so many of you are placing orders on my daughter's site. So she will have them and I will have them and they will just be whatever comes out of the grouping. So I want you to know they have a magnet and they have material all the way around and they will hold a crochet hook very well. They will also hold a pinch of pins and you can pin the little hat to, you, to your pillow and you can use that as a pin cushion. And it actually, the children love it. They like it better than anything, even though they like pinning pins and pin cushions, especially their divider pins. As far as using the little hat, it works very well uh, for holding the pins and uh, getting, being able to pick them up. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so it, we have, my daughter put us on her site, Uncon 2.0 class books, and that's on the Provo Lace shop on Etsy. So if none of you have shopped on Etsy before, it's very easy. You can just put in Etsy, it'll find it. And then you can just put in the words Provo Lace shop all stuck together and my daughter's shop should come up. But it's also easily linked from the virtual vendors on the vending site from MyOLI. Our webmaster has done an excellent jo shop, job linking all of those. Okay, so next slide. And as I start this next slide, I just wanna say thank you, thank you to Belinda for doing that. Because if she, if I tried to do it, believe it or not, I'm so dyslexic, I would probably go backwards and forwards a dozen times. So my deep gratitude to Belinda for moving me forward and not having me lose my place. So the first one is just a book by Pam Nottingham, Beds for Child Lace Making, because beds is being taught. There's not many good books on beds out there that are a little more advanced or have more things than, than, than and, but there are some. And I forgot to put Louise West's new book as a picture up here, I think, that, but, but my daughter has it on the site. There's, there are several, but this is just to remind you that, she's, that, that that's one of our classes and there are some interesting out of print books like this Beds Lace Making by Pam Nottingham. Next. And we have Needlework with Lace Being Taught by Loretta. And this is her Needle Lace and Stump Work book, which has wonderful butterflies in it and a combination of techniques. And there are other needle lace books on the Etsy site. And this is one area that we're gonna be adding more books to. So if you don't see something you, and, and, and you remember me having it in the past or you think I should have more books than what I've got up there with my daughter and just email us or text Anna. Tech, Anna is really good at, at answering questions on the Etsy site. She keeps me up to date and she keeps me going. She's kind of my secretary and all purpose person while I'm president. And she hopefully will continue after my presidency and keep up the shop because it's been a great asset for all of us because Maria can only wear so many hats. So next slide. A Tenerife Lace is another lace that we're teaching. And this is an, a very nice out of print book by Alex Stilwell. And we have a couple of copies of that. Great instruction in Alex's book. This was done in the late 70s and the pack page shows Alex page picture when she was about 40. So it's kind of fun to see. Yeah, we've all aged. All right, next slide. Clones Lace is Mary Trenner and that's the Irish crochet that she's doing. And that book is also available through the Lace Museum but I wanted, we also are showcasing it next. Lear Lace, I only have one more copy of this dark uh, beginner book and I don't have any more book copies of the color in uh, book. They even, Hreit says, Hreit, uh, says that she's only got a few copies left in Europe. So I wouldn't be ordering any more from her but you can always contact her. And, and Lear Lace, uh, uh, Monica, yes, is a needle lace on tool but it's needle not in the same way as you think, it's using a hook. So it's a hooked lace really, needle isn't quite the right, right term. Needle, needle run laces 
are different than tambour, as 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 Leanne says, and 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 lyre lace and tambour are two diff different names, slightly different techniques for the same hook type lace. And and Hrit has done some fabulous things. Okay. Any other questions? You can always put it in the chat. And at the end of this section, you know, if I, I'll give you a moment too if you want to speak up because some of you like to talk, and that's good too. Next slide, please. And this one is all in German, unfortunately, but it has some of the best pictures on lace history. This is per Nancy Evans and a few of the other people. I don't remember getting a recommendation on the book from the lady that's doing the lace ID from the Iowa Lie. I don't know if it, it, you know, before you purchase it, you might, if you're taking that class, you may want to ask her. I believe Anna has several good insight pictures of it. And of course, as one of my Freeway Lace Guild member says you can now easily take sections of text and get it translated. So if you're really into lace identification, in my opinion, this is one you should add. It's a recently published book by Barbara Fay that did, will not get a second publication. So we'll be out of print at some point soon. And it has so many pages and so many great pictures and all well categorized. The names of the laces themselves will relate to English. That's not gonna be a problem. It's their big description that you would need to do. And very good resource. Next. I think that ended, no, no there's, the, Rosalind is the other subject being taught. And some of you have bought these books already online because we've been having this up for a while. Next. And then the Bucks Point by Louise West, of course, she's teaching a basic class. And this is one of the best workbooks that I've ever seen. It's very, very clear. And I know many of you have gotten this already, but we have a lot of copies in stock because it is so good. And we'll know it's going to be a resource for years to come. In the shop, the Etsy shop, you see the insides of the books. My daughter doesn't put any patterns up, but you see a lot of the pictures from the inside. So unlike just having a website where you see one picture, the Etsy site gives you 10 pictures. So Anna has used a lot of that. Her partner does a lot of the photographing and the two of them have done a fantastic job. I mean, 400 plus listings with many of them having two books on them or two, two or more items on them. So there's well over a thousand items in her shop, well over. All right, next slide. Now, we, I, I will stop a moment on this, um, class list books, because if you are taking a class and you want to ask a question because you're looking for something for your class, this might be the time to, for you to speak up or put it in the chat. So I'll wait one moment and, and I'll talk a little bit about the new books as I'm waiting. If you want to chat, like I said, just unmute yourself. The new books are very limited numbers that I'm putting up here. Almost anything that you see somewhere, I may have a copy of. I often pull a copy or only have like, I'll buy like three copies of a new book that's expensive. One for me, one that I, if in case the Iowa Library wants it, and one for somebody. So if I don't have it listed, but you see it on a website, contact me because there's a good chance I do have one stashed away. I do that on purpose. And Bonnie, who's, who's part of our showing, knows that because in the past, she's done this before we had the Etsy site. And she'd contact me, are you getting this book or do you have it? And I'll tell you, the reason I do this is because that person that really needs that book will get it. If I put it on the Etsy site right away, there are book hordes out there that just buy every book, which I don't mind. I don't mind selling to everybody, but I don't, I don't, I want the person that needs it to for teaching or needs it for reference or the library, of course, to get their copy. So that, that's my method to my methodology. It's not, it's not a <clears throat> money making. Maria. Thing. Yes. Do you have this book they might want? The Lace ID. Lace, a quick guide to identification by the Lace Arts Council. Do you have copies of that? I did have copies of it. I think I still do, and it's not on the website. <clears throat> it is available directly through the Lace Count Council. Okay, and because I thought if they were taking the Lace ID class, this one might be. 
it is very valuable for basic pictures and telling you the difference between handmade and machine made too on there. Elizabeth Carella's own book is there is available too. And I need to put those on. So I have Elizabeth Carella's books and I just haven't had the time. So I thank you, Julia, for your, for your comments because honestly, she, you're right. And what is the Lace Council? It is a group from the lace maker of lace makers in Washington. They're not very active anymore. They were under Nancy Evans, but Nancy is still active as a person, but not the lace council itself is not that active, especially because of COVID. But the book that was published by them is a nice pocket sized book that you can take when you go places that you can look real quickly at the close up pictures of a machine made lace, take your magnifier and see if it if it, this is machine or not. And same type of information, but a different detail and, and different way presented is done by, by Elizabeth Carella. And I will hopefully post that one, but if you're interested in it, always you can always make a comment to Anna. Anna will be my secretary and bug me. So be, believe me, if you need something like that, let her know. There was another question in the chat and I miss seeing it. And is, oh, the, what would be a good beginner book for Hinojosa? There was not a whole lot of good stuff on Inahosa except for the huge red book, which is now out of print. And the huge red book is available from the library. It is the one that has history, identification, and techniques all in one. There's a little bit of techniques in a lot of the other books by Carolyn, oh, Carolina de la Guardia. And she is really good and there's stuff on there. If you did not join, Carolina, I believe was the one that taught for the um, doily free zone. And she did a really good introduction there. You may want to contact a doily free zone and see if they're making her class instruction available separately. That's what I understood is that each of those subjects, there was like a $300 charge to have all 12 subjects. And some of them were more uh, knitting and dyeing and a few other subjects in, in that you might not interest you. But the, uh, but that, that, but like I said, that that particular class that she gave was really, really good. I did follow that one, and it was quite good for the for the basics, and it, it worked quite slowly, so it wasn't like a stress class or anything like that. So, all right. Any other? I I I, I Prabha said that she recommends the Hinojosa, and so do I. I mean, I I I've used it with my students. Thank you. Now going on to the first picture in new books. This is a new book that I, I'm the only one carrying it in the US. I have about, I have several copies on Anna's site. So it's, it's not, it's very interesting because the lady did certain grounds and did it all in these little squares. So they would be really sweet little pieces that you could use for various things. You know, it could be coasters, it could be bookmark at the edge of a bookmark, it could be on a, on a card, it could be quite a few different things, but it has a whole bunch of little techniques and several of my teachers have gotten this book and felt that it would be useful to work with their students. It has good diagrams. I, like I said, many pictures on the Etsy site, so you'll get a good idea. All right, next. Chainettes is also another one that I'm only carrying. Ann Wilde did the book on the bobbin lace balls. If you, rem if you remember that one, which has were balls that were actually done on, on styrofoam and they were, they were quite interesting. And she decided to study these braids. And the braids are really, really cool, but we're not sure that these were done by bobbin, but she did them all by bobbin. It's quite interesting what she did. And she shipped me a, the, about 11 of those because that was the price that worked out the best. And several of them are already in libraries and there's a few available. They will not be reshipped to the United States. And shipment got messed up. She got really disappointed and she will not ship out of state again. If these are gone, you can beg her. But she had a problem when she shipped her previous books too. So, you know, she doesn't want third time. And 
we lost several books and it was not because her packaging was poor, but the insurance situation was such a mess during COVID that we never got reimbursed on, on the ones that were lost. So I just want you to know it's quite unusual. And, uh, and it's Marina that taught the class for, for those that didn't notice in the, in the uh, Hinojosa. So that is the lady that did the big book. And next slide, please. This one is Clooney and it's, you know, it, it's definitely polychrome and it's by Adette Arpin who passed away. It is her last large publication. All of her books go out of print quite quickly. I hate to say it, but all the copies I have in house are gone, but they are on reorder and should be here in a few weeks. Um, they went quite quickly. So, some guilds that I, you know, I sometimes a guild asks for a shop in the box and I sent one to a shop in the box and three of their members bought it, which was surprising because I, it's, pretty, it's pretty advanced, but it's very, very nice for anybody that's into beds and the Clooney Gipur like like laces. Gipur is supposedly the mother, and then Clooney and Beds are the are the uh, you know children. Okay, next slide, please. The Barjac Ombre two is Ulrika's second one in 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 this grouping, and Barjac Ombre this time she has explained that it is really basically a floral torsion, so it should not scare most people away. Advanced torsion people can easily do this, but people that have beginning, I mean, intermediate torsion, she has three pieces in this book to get you up to the level, or for those of us that are good diagram readers, we can look at piece one and understand, okay, these are the different things that I need to remember with Barjac, and then piece two gives you a little more, and piece three gives you even more. And then after you've mastered those skills, any of the pieces in the book should be avail be able to be done. And she refers back to skill pages, et cetera. And as known by, by Ulrika, she doesn't waste any pages. So the larger ones are in a folio of patterns that you can Xerox. And the book is just wonderful. It really is one of, one of my favorite new books because all of the recent books by Ulrika, and if you go to Anna's site, you can actually search all of Ulrika's books if you haven't been buying them recently. Those of you that don't know Ulrika real well, she is probably the encyclopedia of lace in so many areas. So where somebody would say at one of the topics in the Hinojosa, not the Hinojosa, in the Idria lecture, she said the Idria teacher wondered why we make so many laces. Well, most of us just like to dabble and become you know, a little bit proficient at many or a lot proficient at a few. But Ulrika has the capability of being proficient in almost everything she does and can diagram it and put it on paper and she has and therefore every single one of her books is a resource to die for and they're all available from our Iowa libra library to to borrow so before you buy if you're not sure borrow from the library it's a great way to go next slide this is another one by Ulrika, and this one is based on point ground laces and its animals. And she worked in conjunction with Ralph Fay, who, who gave up the Barbara Fay business to the book handler in Belgium. And now is kind of, she wanted some animals and he helped put them together. And a very sweet cat is in there. There's some really cool pieces. Again, look at the Etsy site for some inside pictures. Next slide. These other two are also new things that Ulrika did. So all four of the books that you saw are, have all been done during the COVID time by Ulrika. That's how prolific she is. So, you know, it's, she's an amazing woman. So RIP specifically is twilling, she calls it, but the picture doesn't do it justice because it's, it's basically Russian tape type laces where you do the, the gimp work differently than what our normal gimp would be. Again, you know, both of these, you'll see some other pictures on, on the Etsy side. The Schneese down, you can see in the background of her pictures how many gorgeous grounds there are. It is basically all bash grounds, very advanced piece, but candy for the eye, for anyone at all levels. And not overly expensive, but one large pattern with huge amounts of diagrams. 
Next. It's a Wrap is a new Lace Guild publication and getting books from the Lace Guild in England now is costing us a slight amount more than in the past because of shipping. I have only a few copies because I wasn't sure how good this was gonna be. And it is very good. It has a lot of nice scarves in it. Some are unusual. So again, the Etsy site should have inside pictures if she's gotten them done. That was a recent one that she received. So she may be updating that still. Cool one for many reasons, because lots of people like scarves. So, and, and uh, I want to point out that um, the Black Sheep I know has five copies as well. So if we sell out, check Black Sheep because they have them in the USA if they haven't already sold out. All right, thank you. And this little one, sorry, the picture isn't as clear as I thought we had made it. It's multicolored little squares and very simple patterns, but as Claire Bricard's most of hers, the, the diagrams are really good, but there's some tricks in usually most of her pieces. Some are very, very simple. Some have a few cool tricks and they're to fit in a coaster. And that's the picture you see next to it. And you can buy coasters, of course, on your own if you want. But if you don't have them, we are ha we did get some from Claire Bricard along with the booklets if you have a hard time finding them. And nice little booklet. It's in the $14 range and uh, we have some on the site. Thank you. Next. Variations is Kumiko's newest book. She also did the one on Bruges during the, the COVID uh, break, uh, 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 down break. And I don't think that one is listed here. So there's two new books by her. Most of her things are just patterns and diagrams of the pattern. There's not really techniques to learn to get ready for these extensive patterns so that you know. You will need to take other, other books or other classes or even some of Ulrika's early work has things on Banish. Banish's techniques are a little bit here and there because it's based on some of the Flanders techniques are there, etc. Now the variations does not just have uh, Banish in it. It has Banish, Fl Flanders, I believe Flanders, Paris, some, some um, Rosalind patterns as well. And uh, the little birds, as you can see, are more like Duchesse. So it's, it, she has the same thing in her, in her book that's called Bruges. And Bruges is really nice because uh, it has pictures of the area where she studied for more than 20 years, that some of her work that was her early work. So historically, I like that one a lot. And so some of the work that she did in there, it's a, quite a variety and some of them aren't that hard and her pictures are very clear. But again, it's not a technique book, no techniques. Next. These two are new patterns from the Can Centrum. Again, individual patterns. We're really discouraging our Iowa library of, rent, of leasing new patterns until they become out of print. I think it's a copyright issue in some ways. You know, we will buy them for the library because they are so beautiful and unique, but it seems that if you borrow one pattern, it would be because you would want to make it. And that would be kind of a problem as far as Shamina and I are thinking is, is that it, it, there seems to be more single patterns now by the Concentrum. And we do have those for sale, so does Holly. And um, you know, and you can go directly to the Can Centrum and buy them. We really don't want to uh, hurt our nonprofit, the Can Centrum, by borrowing something from the library to copy it to make it. You know, just even though yes, the library, you, anything in the library we can borrow. I think we're going to be hiding some of these individual patterns, just so that you know it's it's a discussion that will happen right after this un, uncon, because. I got concerns for these wonderful artists and for our nonprofits like the Kent Center. Next. The, this is Garden Dreams and it's the, the, the German title and it's by Elfie. And Elfie did a few other books like with, with the many patterns. And this one is very nice because it has, um, again, like her other ones, it has Duchesse, it has Honiton, it has Bruges flower lace, and there are just some beautiful patterns in here. Really not, a, not there's a little bit of technique, 
but good diagrams when it's needed. Okay, next. This one is one of my favorites. We had it actually already in, in, in uh, Spokane, but I wanted to showcase it so that you could see it because very few people got to see it in Spokane. If you see each of the pictures on the front cover has a bobbin in front. The, the, the actual lace is to be representing the region it comes from. So you can see the Duchesse bobbin in front of the Duchesse where the Duchesse flowers are. And every one of those techniques that she has in this book, it's a hardback book with I think about 30 plus regions re represented and great diagrams. And the lace pieces are beautiful. And it's just kind of fun to see all these pieces in one book that represent each of the regions. So Barbara is very talented too. And she's another one of these people that has done a lot of little works that are, that are available that we really haven't gotten in the library. But I, do, I have recently purchased some of her individual patterns and things. And she does do a lot of great work. She has another new book, which I, I'm going to pull out. It's going to have, it's, sorry, now all of a sudden I've buried it. Just one second. It's also on the bookcase. If you could pin me, uh, my Belinda, that would be great. If, if you could if, pin me for a second, if that's possible and not too big a deal. This one is about diagramming things in torsion lace. It's basically torsion in Flanders, but it's all in German. So it's a great book, but you can unpin me now. Uh, it's new. It's by Barbara Corbett too. I love it, but it's not bilingual. The one I'm showing you here does not need to be because it's just a huge diagram. But the other one is a great resource, but all in German. So unfortunately, you will not, you know, unless you want to use the translator, you'll see great diagrams, but you won't understand everything why she's putting these diagrams. But I think it would be a great resource for most of our teachers that are working for, with uh, Torshan people or designers. Next. Oh, the title of the other Barbara Corbett book. I, if you, if, if you look up Corbett in my site, you will see the title. Okay, so just the Lace Maker USA Etsy site has things Anna doesn't have because she didn't have a copy of the picture of this book. And, I, and that one is on my spotlight at the Etsy site. There's only a few items on my spotlight because there were things that we really only have the front cover of this one and a few inside pages, okay? And somebody just typed it. Yeah. Okay, the, the other one, that, the one that, was, that somebody just typed is actually the one with all the different laces, but this one on the pattern drawing is, is her Klopten Zeichnungen Verstehen. So in other words, understanding diagramming in, 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 in bob and lace is really what it is pretty much. Okay, this next series is a series of three new books. Oops, wait a second, not next, next picture. Sorry about that. Um, then this, this one that I just, we're, that is showing is three volumes. Blue is the first one, pink is the second, and green is the third. Blue and green have the most techniques. Pink has more just more advanced patterns and a little bit of techniques. Lots. So the blue one starts with beginning techniques. The uh, green one has more advanced techniques, including some of the Clooney, uh, you know, uh, techniques. So goes from Torshan to you know to 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 Clooney, and uh, I just want they're very nice, but it's just in French. And somebody understanding technical drawings in laces. What Holly, uh, just so that for a footnote that was written on there is, is not, there's no way of translating this that well, but that's the best translation we could get that Holly put out. I put a slightly different translation on my side. Anyway, the Torshan, these three Torshan books would be very interesting to people, especially that can speak French because you can read all the, the, the full page of, it, of items on it, but great new patterns. 
And it's again by one of our authors from France, Mick uh, Fudisco. I believe she may not be the designer of all these because Mick has worked with so many different people, but it's credited to her. Next. Now that is the end of the new book section. So uh, like I said, I have so many other new books that are represented here. Just text Anna or myself or you know, email her on the Etsy site. And if you have a, a burning question and you want to ask it now, you know, so that the, the, the books, of course, are always a really big deal at my site when you guys come to convention, because like those French set, I'm usually the only one that has them. And the, the Blue Corbett book, I was the only one that had it two years ago. There's a lot of books that I will only have, and I may only have four or five copies of, because each of these books is so expensive, and there's only so much one person can afford at one time. I do this because I, I, I don't want to have to double my prices on everything, but I do my best to keep the prices down so you guys can enjoy new books and see them and be able to purchase them. You know, so unfortunately, the seeing right now is harder, and that's why the Etsy site works pretty good to show you inside pictures. So I don't see any other new questions, so let's move on to threads. Now in the thread section, with next, you will see only a few, next slide, Belinda is good. Uh, the, a few pictures. So this diamond thread has been around a little bit, but it's now the full range of it is on the Etsy site. So those of you that are using it, it compares in weight to a little heavier than our tatting 80 thread from DMC. So when you're trying to find something that's a little heavier, but not too heavy, this is a perfect one. And we used to have a similar thread from DMC in, in only a few colors. And it was basically gold, silver, white, red, and green. The red and green went away a long time ago and they had some variegated. And now they don't have much variegated. They've got a black and white, a black and, and gold, but they have more colors. So it's a, good, it's a good gimp thread or it's a good one for adding glitz to your piece. Like I said earlier, there's only going to be a few threads shown here because a lot of threads are on our website, but a lot of them are not even there on the Etsy site because we just don't have the time. So if there's a specific thread that you can't find and I might have in my stash, which I do have a stash of old threads that I, I'm so glad to get to a lace maker that needs it. I mean, you don't know how many times a year somebody says, do you happen to have any more of X, Y, Z? And at least half of the time I can say yes. So, you know, if you need something, don't hesitate to let me know. Next slide. So the C DMC Sibelia has been gone now from the United States for a couple of years, but Anna in her research has found some of it available. The white, the ecru, and the off-white, I would call it, are still available and they're actually on my site and they're available regularly still from the DMC is still sending those to the US. But these colors that Anna found of the DMC Sibelia, we are, she only bought the 30 because that's the one that most of the lace makers used in the past. And we use these a lot for our 3D roses and the crocheters and tatters use this a lot too. So she did not buy the 20 because she only had so much money for inventory. And now it's pretty much gone. There wasn't much 20 anyway. But on the 30, she did have this nice range of colors. It is selling out fast. So, you know, if you're interested in some DMC Sibelia, it was one of the better values for the money, like 540 some odd yards, you know, for the for 650 or, or so price or $7 now, I think, because there is a cost to listing on Etsy. And in order to make it profitable, we do have to raise the price a little bit on some of these things. Okay, next slide. This is the Gold, um, uh, the London Dairy, which is exactly the same as Gold Shield, Shields. I've had the Gold Shield a long time in the larger put up. Anna, because of embroiderers, has taken up a lot of the size 18 over three. It's also a great gimp thread. It does not have a lot of put up in this size, but it's enough for a, a project. And therefore, you know, if you're looking for a heavier gimp thread, it goes 
from 18 over three, which is the heaviest, to 30 over three, and then, then 50 over three, 66 over three, and 80 over three. So all five of those are available in this full range of colors that she has pictured. So the, if, and if you don't understand the over threes, the 66 over three divided by two, uh, by three, I'm sorry, that's 22. 22 multiplied by two would get you 45, 44. So the thread that is the closest to that would be a 40 linen or a 50 linen, it's right in between. So if you want a gimp, you'll want it quite a bit heavier than the 66 over three. So you might wanna go as heavy as the 18 over three, but if you don't wanna go quite that pronounced and you want it just a little heavier than the 30 over three would work. So, so it's kind of an interesting you know, way of looking at threads a little bit. It should be an easy way for you to look at a linen over three to see where it compares to an over two. It's not 100% because each manufacturer manufactures differently. Any questions on that statement that I've just made? Okay, I'm glad that, that it's clear enough that we could move on. Next slide, please. Oh, what I did forget to say about the Gold's Child is that the Gold's Child and the London Dairy are the same, but the Gold's Child has about seven times the put up or five, six times the put up. So when you pay 350 for a small put up and you get five times as much for like $11, the, the large put up is definitely the way you want to go if you need a 50 over three for a class. You do not want to be buying three or four of these little guys and you only, I think the 50 over three is, is less than 50 meters. So, you know, it's, it's, and it's, it's a huge difference. Now, the, this last picture that I believe is the last one, but maybe not, it's the DMC 80, one of our favorite threads that again, just disappeared because DMC decided not to ship us any. The interesting part that maybe 90% of you do not know, but even 10 years ago or longer, in 2018, 2008, when I went there, you could get DMC at a needle workshop in the 80 size, but you were paying over $3 for it while we were paying $2 for it. So I think DMC had an agreement with the US for exporting that kept the prices low to us for so many years. And because shipping has gotten so expensive, they have decided to discontinue shipping this thread altogether to us. Now, if you want the 80 in white or ecru, the equivalent coordinate works. Don't you know, feel like you have to have these little balls, the equivalent works. But in the colors, it doesn't come in the coordinate. They only have the white and the ecru. They don't have the bright white either. And if, in this picture, you will see the bright white. You see the ecru, which is very light, and a darker ecru, which I think is 739. But these are all listed on Anna's site. And I also have a set of them that came in because when, when she told me that she or, was able to order a, a group of these, I also ordered, but by that time, some of them were already gone. Just so from the supplier that still had left over. So eventually, Anna will put my stock on her site, but she's trying to not make it a mess that she, like let's say that you have colors that I don't have, it's shipping will just be outrageous. So just be patient. If you want to know what I have, I do have, I, I, I think I've got that listing up correctly already. But if I don't, um, text me and let me know because I believe it's ready to go and I put it up. But I'm wearing so many hats that my memory's not all there about what I've put what I've put up there and what I haven't put up there. But my picture's slightly different. I know this is a little weird compressed, but it shows you the colors pretty well. All right, next slide. Uh, and then on a linen thread, uh, the reason I put this one up, it's one of our threads that we have all the time. It's well, well um, pictured on my site of the Etsy website, the Lace Maker USA one. But if you notice at the bottom, the freesia is a squattier one. The newer freesia, when he's doing the linen, is a slightly smaller put up than before. 
and is a different spooling and therefore he's raised his price a little bit. So that when you're getting some freezer, you might get two different size spools. There's nothing I can do about it. That's the way the put up is now. And uh, sometimes putting all the information on the Etsy site is almost impossible. So next slide. So this is just specifically a rare find out of print books. This will go fairly quickly, okay? And I think that unless there's somebody that has a major question on threads, it doesn't look like it because there was no chat things. Okay, so rare to find next. Uh, these are the last of some of the, uh, the Kant Centrum books about each of the, when they do the OITFA conference, each every two years they'll do a packet of patterns and they're quite varied. And Adeline, Kain and Ljubljana are available of some of the older ones are almost gone. So Ljubljana had a beginner and an expert. So those you can see on the site, they're, they're a very good variety of patterns. And for those that want to support the Kant Centrum, this definitely helped, helps them keep going in the final count. You can also uh, you know, see the more recent ones that, uh, as well. Next. The Early Lace Workbook, I have a copy of that available at the moment. Shipping from Australia is like the worst now. And we're the worst to them, so they're the worst to us, it seems. And it's not, it has a lot to do with the way our customs between them and between us, and, et cetera. And they are tacking on an extra fee to shipping to us and probably to Canada too, but, but Canada's prices are usually very high on shipping. So this is a copy that's available. If it's, it's a very early techniques, uh, Gipur, you know, the very early uh, lace workbook and very good diagrams. If you never got it, I think she's gonna keep it in print, but it gets really expensive if you want it from Europe. So I'm not sure if it got up on the site, but if it did did not, I don't remember if Anna had it or if, or if I had it, just contact me. And, and I know the, the book is, is here. So whoever contacts me first <coughs> or buys it on the site, which I think we didn't get it up on the site. Okay, next. This one Anna has, it's one she bought from an estate. It's an out of print Deutscher Klopperverband book. The Deutscher Klopperverband is the Dutch German Lace Guild. They again are another nonprofit. They publish some extremely good things that go out of print quickly, but are also costly. She has one copy of this fan book that's a variety of fans with a fold out pattern page or two in it. Great, great book if you're interested in fans. The, I believe she did some nice inside pictures of that one. So one copy available, check her site. Next. A Bed's Lace Collection, we have one more copy available. I think she had a copy and I had a copy. So she, don't, she put one up and if it's not up again, send her a message because I do have a copy and I don't know that she's put mine up yet. Okay, we, that again is a wonderful beds book that's out. Uh, the outlines and stitches and is an old guide to, to needle lace and in particular has alas lace needle techniques in it. So if the alas lace picture on the front cover, alas lace is a lace that was actually developed later. The history is very well documented. It took many years for people to understand fully this lace. It's it's, it's, it's an interesting needle lace. And I think Loretta has taught a beginning class on this and may do it again. Very nice book by Pat Earnshaw, which covers some very good outlines and stitches, but, but in, in guides for designing and needle lace as well. Next. The 50 mil, new Milanese patterns has become extremely expensive on the internet. Anna acquired a copy from an estate and that one I think is pretty reasonable on her site. So if you've been looking for that one, it's the last of the pa Patricia Reed Kincaid series. This one is only by Pat Reed and it's just patterns, but some really great patterns. Next. This Mylander Spitzen also from the Deutscher Klepperberg band is a one of one off. So uh, again, all on Milanese laces and other tape laces. Next. 
building torsion lace patterns. We should have a couple copies of this one. If they're not up on the site yet, um, just let us know. We, we, that is a great book by Bridget Cook, been out of print for a while. And I think we have one hardback and one paperback. So for your students, sometimes that's a really good one that if they're built, if they're really wanting some more advanced torsion patterns as well. Next. Practical skills are whole standby Bible for those teachers that have students that need it. We've got several copies in stock and uh, always a, gr a, a great resource. You don't wanna miss that one. And uh, if, if to tell, let your season, seize, uh, it, let your, your, uh, um, your uh, students know next. And you know, I made a mistake. Somebody mentioned that Plowin is peacocks. I think that book is all on peacocks and, and many fans, but, but it's all on peacocks because you're, she's right. That is the peacock book. And I, I could be wrong. I don't have my copy in front of me. So my apologies. The miniature bobbin lace and the new bobbin lace by Ross Snowden. It was been out of print a while, but I know a lot of people are always interested in this one. It's one of the few that I will get requests on do I still have a copy? So there's some, somehow or another, this has always been a very popular pair of books. And we do have a couple copies available on the website, very reasonable. And Etsy's, uh, Anna's Etsy side has them. So next. The Flanders uh, book by, uh, is also another one we've, we've uh, got one copy of. It's Anna purchased that one from an estate it's, it's not a cheap book because it's in hardback, was never cheap. And it's one that's been recommended by Bobby Donnelly for people that want to continue with the, with the Flanders. So if you're interested in that one and it's not on the Etsy site that Anna has, text her and she's, she should have it up. If she hasn't, you know, she, she prob her because she's got the pictures. She just may not have written all the descriptions. So much, so much to do, so little time. Next. This is one that I wanted to feature under the new books because we didn't get it hit very much. Uh, the Keta book, there's a question which I'll answer in a moment. The Keta book is by Ulrika Volker and Ulrika did long tape strips for beginners that then can be assembled into a necklace. So for the teachers that have, whose students have a roller pillow, this is one way to put quite a few patterns side by side. They can move the other bobbins over and they can learn several new things on one on their roller pillow. It doesn't have to be a roller, it could be a block pillow, but it has whole bunches of braids. And once you, they've mastered that braid, they can go on to the next one. So I think there's six braids that are interlocked. She uses some interesting fibers in there. So there's a lot of thinking that's going on in this is also a mixture of fiber, et cetera. Fun little pamphlet, not expensive. It's but once it's gone, it's going to be gone. It was a runoff only in German, but the, you don't need the English language because the diagrams are, Ico Rica always does great. You don't need a lot of other instruction and it does have the tread information. So uh, anyway, Anna's Etsy site has that. Next. Okay, before we go to one of our kind items, I wanted to, I know I'm running out of time. I just realized, so I'm gonna to have to go through these real quickly. The Cantu question, I, I'm gonna to have to answer later. Maria, okay, whatever kind, let's go on real excuse quick. Excuse me, here. Maria, can I just make an announcement? You are running out of time. I don't want anybody to miss the bingo. Um, Maria and I will continue on with her lovely slides and anybody who wants to stay is more than welcome to stay. Anybody that has to leave to go see bingo, this will be recorded. It will be on our YouTube channel so you can see the rest of it. Sorry, Maria. No, no problem. Thank you, Belinda, for making it available that they can stay on if they'd like. Okay, so one of a kind items is kind of a fun section, which I know some of you were waiting for, so my apologies. And the bingo game is also important too. So let's move on to the next slide. On my site, Lacemaker USA, you will see these beautiful bags that my daughter made. That's the daughter with the seven children in Tennessee who had 12 children. So she is a seamstress. All of these are well finished inside. They are quality items. And we'll go through the next couple of slides quickly. You'll see they're all, well, all pretty much one of a kind. The Paris one, she does have two of. The next slide, um, the floral, I, there, there's two of. 
And the last one is the purple one. There's only one of. They will hold, all hold up to a 20 inch pillow. Two of them are available that will hold up to 24 inch pillows. Basically, like I said, one of a kind. Even uh, some of them are, are, have the differences is that the pocket's a different color. So they're all solid color on one side and a pocket on the other side and a pocket on the inside. They are $75 plus shipping, which is really pretty reasonable for the amount of work she's put into them. I mean, she loves to sew. She had a tragedy in her family a couple of years ago and she, more than two and a half years ago now, and she went to sewing and she said, mom, I had these, this material to make bags years ago and I never did it. Shall I make them now? And I said, sure, because she really needed something to keep her busy. So she made like, I think 11 of these bags. Next slide. P pillow covers. This isn't a very good picture. So I've got to grab the item real quick and spotlight me if you have a chance. So these pillow covers are a fuzzy material. And you see, the, they're very beautiful little hedgies on this one. Most of them are hedgies. They are fully lined. It's one of those fluffy, so, the, so this is to cover your pillow after work. So you just, it's, it's heavy. It'll protect your pillow from your critters if they get on it, because it, it, it's one of those nice padded fabrics. And, and Susan made only a couple of these. So this is again, the mom of the kids and they're well, double, double material with an elastic. They will go easily over a 22 I, and I didn't check the 24, but if somebody wants me to check the 24, I can do that. And the other patterns I'll do go real quickly. There's another cute edgy one with pastels. Oops, she, she took me off spotlight, that's okay. It's, since people that want to stay on may want to, you guys can see these all on my Etsy site. There's the little pastel hedgies. I think there's two of those. There's a couple of this one as well. It's, it's a cute, big edgy. Can you see the big edgy? Yeah. Okay. And then there's, I think that's three. I think there was one, one more edgy. It's blue. Where did he go? There he is. So then, and there's a couple of these as well, the tiny little edgies on blue. And like I said, they're all lined. So then, so there's blue lining, well, well finished. Okay. Oh, and to match the pillows that bags that you saw, there is one Paris one cover, very nicely finished with tape, very nice quilted fabric. All, all of those pillow bags are quilted fabric, by the way. Very nice, heavy, so much harder to work with, you know. The, this one is the flowered pattern. There's one of those. There's one of this paisley one, and it's reversible and has the other pattern on the other side. And, and then this last paisley one and the pattern on the other side. So they match the bags. So if somebody is really interested in that, they are kind of a fun item. Okay, next slide. So now filling this so quick. These are my, our lace maker magnets. Anna has those on her site. There, there's one or two of them. My daughter worked with the picture people and did these a couple of years ago and there's a few left. The pictures aren't real good here, we apologize, but I think they're a little better on Etsy. We just, it's hard to take pictures and then make them a little bigger. So they're, they're cute, they're nice. And, and, and they make a nice refrigerator magnet and a nice gift for a lace maker far away. They fit in an envelope, so. The bags to put the pillows in, somebody asks, are on the Lace Maker USA Etsy site. So you can connect to it on our website for IOLI under all the virtual vendors. When you find Provo Lace, which I think we're in the top row, then you look at Lace Maker USA on Etsy, click on that, and the spotlight items should be there. Okay. Okay, our next slide, please. Oh, this is our last set of items. Very cool bobbin boxes that I got. This relates to the little gift you're going to get for coming to UNCON. The un, not, not just by registering, but you have to come to the annual meeting. So there's only 
I should have said this earlier when there was quite a few more people still on, but the 51 of you that are left or 52 of you that are left, please make sure you drag a friend or two to come to our annual meeting. They will get a special surprise that, that has a hedge on it. And it's also pictured on our website under the virtual vendors, if you scroll down, you'll see a little hedgy that you've never seen and it's a thread holder. You will all get one of those mailed to you. I wanna make sure that our organization has a quorum because there are 550 plus people attending this event. One third of them have to come to the annual meeting for us to open the meeting. So we need 180 plus people to come. So please, all of you come, get friends to come. Please, 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 it's super important Speak to our organization. It's not, you know, it's a very simple meeting. We are going to just have one vote on this slate of officers and then you get to see this great talk by Yvonne Shayla. Okay, <laughs> so these are the slides of the boxes. The boxes, I don't remember if, if she has the slides of the inside. So the lace maker one, I had them all engraved. So the lady engraves things on them. You can order these boxes with your name on them. You can order these particular six on, our, on my website, Lacemaker USA, for just the box. When she sells them, it's the box with a bunch of needlework floss holders, which maybe many of us don't need. But the boxes I thought were so clever. The tatter one, I just decided it was the panda because because what he's holding kind of looks like a shuttle, even though it's not, you know, you can use your imagination that he's tatting. So anyway, I just, I, there's one of each and my cat, the cat was my favorite. I mean, I thought that was pretty clever because it go and, and uh, of course she's, she maybe with some probing will make a hedgehog one for us. I mean, isn't that one cute? I mean, just clever, clever. And, and uh, she has many other things on her site. So I'm promoting her as well because she gave us, gave, not charged the IOLI for anything. What will cost us is for me to mail them to you. And they, she gave us all the floss holders with the little hedgy on them. And my, the reason, it, it's a long story why that happened, but it was her misunderstanding of just sending me a business card that she decided that she was making these. And by the time I could, correct her she sent me the picture and she had them all made already so who is this please it's called art inspire on etsy and you can find her through our iowa live website virtual vendors page okay somebody said something about the bags are they not up the bags for bob and Lisa do not ship to canada I can make arrangements to ship the bags to Canada, but I've got to weigh them and see what I can do. So any Canadian or European, contact me separately. I'll do the cheapest possible shipping I can. They are definitely under four pounds, but I don't know if I can package them under two pounds and the two pound rate's getting high too. So just so that you know, all right? So I'll make arrangements, not a worry. I, I don't want anyone to be left out. Okay, next slide okay so this is the inside with taking out none of the dividers you can see that the, this is a little squatted up but these are our normal four inch bobbins and uh, they fit nicely in all their little containers so the next slide uh doing taking a few of the dividers out our larger bobbins will fit in and of course for tatters when you've got 10 little places you can put tatting shuttles you can put you know, your, your smaller items can go in there. It's really a fun, they're fun boxes. I just, when I saw it, I ordered one, it arrived so quickly. So really, you know, I would love to sell the six that I have, but if you really want something different than what I've got, I'm not gonna be insulted. Art Inspire deserves our business, you know, and, and she has other items. All right, thank you so much for that. And now there's this one little cute pillow I had gotten two of these from an estate. I was gonna keep this one and give it to one of the grandchildren, but the more I thought about it, it really is a little bit more money than what I should give them because my little grandchildren 
they'll always take care of stuff. So, and mom doesn't have time to watch after seven kids making sure they take care of their stuff. So I decided that this gorgeous little travel pillow will go to another lace maker and it has a little basket. The, the bag it has pockets on the outside. It's got a zippered bag. It's just the cutest little set. And Bonnie Jean who's on got the other one because I, I, I let her know early on that I had this one. And for those of you that don't know Bonnie Jean Reeves out of Oregon, she is going to be putting a new set of articles together for us on her pillows and her feelings of which ones work better or not. It may take her another six months to get it done, but she is she has got the world's, not the world's, but one of the USA's biggest bobbin lace pillow collections, if not the biggest. I've been at her home and she keeps adding them. And I think she's got three rooms that are almost full of bobbin lace pillows. You know, it's it's amazing. And and she she's 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 a wonderful hostess too. She hosted me many years ago, and I know her pillow collection has grown. <laughs> All right, the next slide, please. These two are two of my roller pillows. I have not put them up on the site yet. I apologize. They are very nicely stuffed with a, a straw material. I believe they're straw, and and they're very sturdy. Once they get listed, you'll be able to to get more information. They're very good ones. They came out of Europe. Again, shipping's getting outrageous out of Europe, so I'll be probably not buying any more. Plus, I'm wearing that hat that says, you need to start retiring, Maria. You're going to be 70 next year. And Anna does has a small house, so she's not going to be able to carry a lot of pillows. So I will probably not be importing any more rollers. So if you really want a roller pillow and you're not sure if you like these two patterns or sizes, let me know and I'll try to let you know what I've got. And of course, remember Ali Marguccio's husband does make the nice little roller roll pillow that works for the Idria lace very well and works for other laces. It, it's not just for Idria, but if you like a little larger one, these are a little larger. All right, next. This is a block pillow that came out of Germany. This is the larger block. So I've got the six inch ruler next to it. The color is a very nice deep blue. The pictures weren't coming out very well and the flash kind of messed up the color a little bit, but I've got the one that has a seven inch fully square block. So they're seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. This one is seven and a quarter by 10 and a half or so. So, or at close to 11. And so it would work very well for a scarf. So these two, one of each is available and they're on the site. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Vicky, I think you need to let let my daughter know if she hasn't sold it yet. Okay, just send her a message and I will do the same. This is an older roller pillow. And, and my daughter is going crazy. She doesn't realize that my program is going over time. So, so I, 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 for those of you that are on there with me for a moment since she's my co part. Oh, except that I can't find the phone and she's hung up now. Maybe she, maybe she'll probably call back on the cell line. My apologies, guys. But this is, you know, it's as if you're in the shop. Things happen. Some other customer comes and drags me away, or my daughter comes and drags me and says, "This customer needs to know about this." So the same stuff happens. This gorgeous pillow is older. It's got a very sturdy roller, extremely. It, the material buckles a tiny bit, but it has 30 bobbins. It has a pattern that's been started was something that I did as a labor of love many years ago. I'd acquired it actually used with the first three repeats on it and the pattern on it. And somebody needed something for a museum to show Bob and Lace in progress. I continued working it and you can maybe see on the close up that it's half stitch in the, um, the, the, the diamond that goes, not the diamond, the, uh, the weave that goes back and forth, the, the, the pointed weave on the edge. But it doesn't look like half stitch at the beginning because it's so tight. I don't want to work that tight and I want my half stitch to at least show up. So I actually ended up taking out, I think, two or three pairs on that, on that half stitch and then continued working it. And this went on show in this museum in, in mid-California where they showed this family's estate where the woman had made a bunch of bobbin lace. So her pieces were out and they inquired if, they, if I had a pillow that they could use. And so I shared this pillow with them for many years. They kept this display up for a couple of years. And then it finally was shipped back to me. And 
I've kept it and thought I, you know, maybe there's another request, but at this point, I've got a downsize too. So this may be something that somebody wants to re remove the piece or continue with it, but somehow or another from the time that it was at the museum till now, the pattern got lost and there's only the pricking part that's underneath. So, and I don't even know where the pattern came from because it came with the pillow originally and I don't have it anymore. So next. Oh, and then there's this cute little, there's three of these on my site. They're, they're, they're linen, I think they're linen. Um, uh, oh, come on, tea towels. So they're about 24 by 32 or so. And they've got this cute little lace maker on them. So, and I think they're, they're not that expensive, like $12 or something. Next. Oh, new bobbin lace tools. So we need to go quickly because I'm holding up my dear friend. So I'm gonna to try to finish this up pretty quick here. Okay. And there was one chat thing that I'll look at real quick. Okay, that was the private message, so that's fine. Okay, and I'm, I'm just, you know, I said contact Anna on that. So next. Okay, so these bobbins have a smaller head and are the international ones, and they're now listed on the Lacemaker USA site. You can see the woods that are available here, the first wood that's a little redder, that's, I don't have any more of. The second one, yes. The third one that's lighter colored, no. It's there, these three were kind of all rosewood related woods. They were at different names, but the second one I think is the, I wanna say is the Ipa rosewood, but I'm not 100% sure. I've got a few in the ebony, the Paduk, the, uh, I also have some in the Guatambo and some in the Purple Heart. These have smaller heads. And I tell you, the people that have used these, they come back to get them because when you have valbin management and you've got 50 bobbins, this really works. And I apologize, but they're doing street work. Okay, next picture. Painted bobbins by Valancey. Valancey is not able to paint. She may never be able to paint. Her health is deteriorating for many reasons. Whatever's left is on the site. Some of these are already sold. Just look at the pictures. Send me a message on Etsy if you're interested in a particular bobbin. She would love to sell these because both of her and her husband are, are disabled now. It's, it's a mess. She's young. She's in her 40s. They shouldn't be disabled, but both of them are. So any any sales, you know, will help her tremendously. Next. These are some new little English bobbins that I have a limited amount of, and, and also the short um, tra travel standard English bobbins available on Annie's Anna's Etsy site. Next. These are fancy Midlands that have a different head and I'm gonna be getting a few more that have a slightly different head, but these are available on Anna's Etsy site. Next. And these are some new um, four, five and six inch holders for your bobbins in different wood coloring. And, and I believe that they are just dyed woods. They are not, but, they, but normally the threads won't be touching the, the, the holders. So they're very inexpensive on Anna's Etsy site. Next, uh, some new little tools and bobbins. Again, from new tools, bobbins, keep looking at our sites. They keep adding new things. Next. These nice little divider pins by Simon Tousteau. These are the mid-size range, beautifully hand-turned, again, available on Anna's Etsy site. Next. Some new little thread cutters that pendant thread cutters that are really, really look like jewelry on you. Very nice. And some very tiny scissors, all things you could take on the airplane. And very, very nice to have also when you're demonstrating to have a thread cutter necklace. Next. And there's a curved scissors here and, and it doesn't show real well on the picture, but a very nice one where it's a little curved and you can easily cut close to your, to your pattern. Great for needlework and bobbin lace. And we've got a little bit of jewelry as well that, that for those of you that are into the lace jewelry. Next. And some other unique little items that we have like the, 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 uh, the you know, you just have to keep checking the site. We pop up new items, things sell out. Next. And different 
prickers, again, the variety prickers and pushers. And some of them are one of a kind like this one and that one there. There's not more of those. They're just individually turned. Large ergonomic ones for your older lace makers that may need a pricker that's a bigger handle. Next. Actually, that goes with me too. Same thing with the pullers and pushers. My hands are getting to the point where I like them thicker. And, uh, and then the, these two, bottom ones are multiple copies. One, two, and three are gonna be one of a kind. Next. In tatting, oh, real quickly, what we have new in tatting. Next. Some nice shuttles, and Anna has some of these available on the site. There will be more available on my site when I finally get this box picture up. I apologize, but I ran out of time. Wearing too many hats, what can I say? Next. These nice little shuttles have been around, and they're on the Etsy site that Anna has. Next. The new Dreamlit shuttles are very popular. Anna has this variety of these on her site. They come in these five colors and they're, they're a fun new shuttle that you can put on this holder that you see and then wind your thread easier. Next. Tatting books, I just put that there's, I put this picture to remind me to tell you that we've got a lot of tatting books, many of them that are out of print. Next. Same thing here. This one's out of, uh, it's still in print. So the, the, there's a bunch of different ones. There's just, just uh, a lot of them aren't even listed on the site. So just inquire if there was a book you were looking for because I am actually gonna deplete my private collection because Anna is a tatter and she's gonna pick out what she wants but there's nobody else in the family that needs those. And some will go to the IOLI library. Next. This is the new tatting designs by Pon Palmer, also on the site. Next. A couple of other new books that just came out this year. Those are on the site. Next. Needleworks, a few new things. New, a few things to point out on needlework. So we can go there next. And, and Anna is putting up a pretty good size needlework site. So ne these are the five, oops, sorry. Um, these are the five books by uh, oh, not Buen Pardre. And unfortunately, I'm not able to get more of these. And I think number three just sold out. I might sell my own book because I'm not a really big needle lacer. I have to debate on that. But all five of these are, should, should be available except for number three, depending on if I decide. Very good, well diagrammed books on, on needlework that you know, are hard to find. The right cello, uh, the two right the cello ones are really, really nice. Next. Some Hardanger and other books by Yvonne, Yvette Stanton. She does a lot of historical on the area. And my understanding is that early, early style Hardanger book is one of the best ones out there on Hardanger. And these are available on Anna's site. Next. This is another one of Yvette's books. She does, she researches the history of the of the lace or the needlework, I should say. And this, so this has the technique and the history. So it's pat, this is pattern darning from Norway and well well illustrated, just a very nice resources for those that are doing needlework. Next. The Bob Melik is again by her, same thing, very well diagrammed. Next. Again, she showcased this one separately and she put them up a couple of days ago and the two copies that she had are gone. So I don't know, I've got to look around. I might have a third copy for sale and plus mine, but we'll see. Next. Needle Lace by Jacqueline Peter. Those that have looked at this said it's a really good workbook to work through, just a very practical guide. A really good one for those of you that want to know a little more about Needle Lace not expensive, very good one. Also available on Holly's site if we run out. Next. White work, for those that are into white work, this was an old standby, also available on, on Anna's site. Very good little book, not expensive. Next. This one is, is out of print. Again, it's you know pulled thread white work type of work, very well diagrammed, was being used by a German teacher to do a class and, and then afterwards a lady in Denmark did the same thing 
and she almost wiped us out of all our copies, except that I found a few more. And uh, she's, so at this point, we've got a few copies left. Very, very good for those that, that are into this type of work. Next. That's it. Okay. We did good. I know I only went over 20 minutes and all my talking, you know, it's one of those things Maria can't stop talking, but I did want to point out one thing that don't forget to look at the Hensel site too. The Hensel's may not have put up a really pretty pictures or things, but they are the ones that do our DVDs. Okay. And, and really they're the people that we can owe to having instructors in our house before we could do these virtual classes. So those of you that haven't been around us that long, don't hesitate to check out their new Idria one. And Elizabeth Peterson did one on ornaments that's just coming out. I don't know if he got it done on time for Uncon. For those of you that don't know, because I've put an article before or about the Hensels, they've been around forever almost, but John is dealing with a wonderful lace maker wife that had a stroke quite a few years ago and he's her main caregiver. So when he, he tries to get caught up with everything. So this is a wonderful place for you to also shop for directly for your DVDs, okay? And today is and, Kathy's birthday. So everybody oh my. wish her a happy birthday. That's right. This is a good time to get on. Thank you for reminding me, Belinda. I haven't looked at my Facebook. My Facebook reminds me of important people's birthdays. Yeah. So really, this is a perfect time for you get you guys to send her a message through their through their website or wherever. If you if you're in contact with them, I know a lot of our Oregon people still are. She they lived in Eugene for a while. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, there's something in the chat real quick. I don't know what it was, but thanks so much. Oh, yeah, that's from Bobby. He enjoyed it. Yeah. So, so it, it, it's, it's hard to know, you know, what, what to share on this site. Belinda told me I had way too much after a DM that she's right, because it's so hard to stop talking about stuff, you know, when you have so much in your brain to talk about. Okay, I'm glad, Kim, that you enjoyed it. And I really, really appreciate you all coming on. And remember, beautiful, cute, little hedgy thread holder only, only if you come to the annual meeting. It's a one-off, only if you come. All right, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. And if you missed bingo because you had to make a hard choice, don't forget there's another scheduled bingo later in the week. Check your, your schedule and make sure you get in and see that. Thank you much. Hi, I just wanted to thank both you and Maria um, for all your hard work because you did such an excellent job doing all this stuff for this on Uncon. Thank you, we appreciate that. Thank you so much, Lucy. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, I don't really need the business. I should be retired, but you need it. You need the variety. You need the opportunity to shop. So Anna has stepped up to the plate to help me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. If Anna didn't do some, this stuff, look at 400 entries on Etsy that she's done since I, since basically since I became president. Yeah, I mean, vice president, sorry. So anyway, Belinda, again, thank you very much. A big round of applause. She was a really good slide presenter, the best. She's, <laughs> She's, she's done ev all this work with all the vendors, by the way, if they wanted it. And some of them needed some hand holding. So really, Belinda, thank you very, very much. It's you know, she's, she wears the chairman's hat, but then she does this work with us as vendors. And thank you very much. All right, and thank you everyone thank you. for coming. And I think we're ready to load off unless somebody really has to say something. I wanna say I've got a decade up on you. And I have, I've retired from everything but lace. Yeah, well, I won't retire from lace and I will continue vending at a lower key because Anna can only house so much stuff. And honestly, I have a one car garage full of stuff. Some of it has never been to convention because, you know, I have crocheted items and needlework books that I think, I think Arizona is going to get a lot of unique things and a sellout table. And so those of you can make it to, and we have to figure out a way to make a virtual shop and, 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 and for those that need to shop long distance when we go to Arizona, Belinda, we got to figure that out. We, we'll because out. honestly, so many people, 550 plus people have joined us this year. That's almost half of our membership. 
And if you look at yeah, last year's membership at the end of the year, we had 1,032 members at the end of last year. So based on last year's members, we have more than half of that number attending our convention. That's, that's fabulous, you know? And people like Bob that have never attended, I mean, you know? And Barbara usually doesn't get to attend every year because it's such a long distance for her and costly. So really appreciate all of you. I think you guys also were so good about turning off your mic so we didn't have a lot of background except for the stupid guy that was working doing something in the street here, you know? So anyway, thank you again, Belinda. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank Big you. wave from me to you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.